Hey guys, it's Andre from the High Performance Academy. We're here with BC from BC Moto Engineering to talk about his insane Honda Odyssey wagon. So BC, this, this car is amazing. We want to just get a, a little bit of a spec list going of what you've done to it. So can we start with the, uh, the engine? What have you done there? It's a J35 power plant from Honda, but I've done amazing things to it. The factory sleeves are Dr. Iron, impregnated in aluminum. Those are completely removed and replaced with a full duct out iron sleeve, which are also braced to prevent any kind of movement or whatnot at high, high boost pressures and high stress levels. So we're talking, we're talking about taking a naturally aspirated engine and you've, you've oh, turbocharged yes. it. So, yes. okay. My apologies, I'm, I went ahead of myself here. The engine is naturally aspirated, it makes a whopping 250 horsepower. 206 to the wheels is what I saw in on my dyno. However, we added a very large mid-frame turbocharger to it and reinforced internal significantly to be able to handle the power and I handled the boost as well without any any challenges whatsoever. What brand of pistons and con rods are you using in it? R&R connection rods, which are made of steel, and Aries pistons of our design, 9 to 1 compression. What about heat gasket integrity? Is that a problem in this engine? None whatsoever. The head gasket from factory, being a multi-layer steel, is extremely robust. And we put them through the ringer. We have 1,000 horsepower inline four cylinder engines using the same factory MLS head gaskets. I employ the same technology from Honda in this engine as well. Valve train, has anything changed there? Significantly. The vehicle in the U.S. market only comes as a six-speed automatic. This two, the 2014 Odyssey van really needed significant assistance in the drivetrain department. So, we had some custom axles made in-house. Above and beyond that, the gearbox was removed, six-speed, removed from an automatic perspective, and a manual gearbox was added from a 2008 Acura TL, which also comes from factory, um, from Acura with a limited slip differential, with also a custom shifter as well using some, some Honda parts and some parts fabricated in-house. So this, this Honda Odyssey here, this never came out as a manual option, did it? Never manual option in the US. So this is the, the only one in the world that's got a six-speed manual? That is correct. Only one in the world, six-speed manual of this generation, 2014. Okay, let's talk about the cooling package on it. Intercooler, radiator, what have you done there? Wow. We had a spherical turbinetics core brought in-house. Then we had to fabricate in-house the end tanks and be able to do something very, very interesting for the package to allow not only clearance for the hood, but also a very efficient flow so we don't have any turbulent type of flow in the intercooler itself. As you can imagine, when we do turbocharge and we compress the air, there's a significant amount of heat exchange that has to occur to keep things in check so we don't have any problems. The heat is generated in direct proportion to the compression. And to be able to eclipse the 25, 26 PSI mark, we have to have a very efficient bar and plate in a cooler to be able to do that. And my team and I were able to put something together and design something that met that mark and kept the temperatures, intake temperatures in check. Okay, getting, a, getting an engine like that, so modified yes. to run well in, in a car, obviously the electronics is pretty important. What have you done there to keep everything running? Well, as an advocate of the AEM EMS, I did elect the services of AEM once again to use an AEM Infinity ECU. The vehicle still stays full drive-by-wire, so I have full control of all the protocol for drive-by-wire. I even have the ability, if I so desire, to have different modes of sport, eco, and full-on full, you know, full uh, normal mode, if I desire. The traction control parameters in this, as you can imagine, being a front-wheel drive vehicle, can be a bit of a challenge. The AEM has a wonderful system, so easy to allow me to control traction and monitor front and rear, <laughs> front and rear, rear wheel speeds and keep them within check by taking away power either by closing the throttle using um, some type of ignition cut, using a fuel cut if need be, but fuel cuts tend to be a little bit hard to recover from. So I'm a huge advocate of TPS and also a soft ignition rev limit. So with that traction control, how much power is it trying to hold to the ground? Oh, this thing was designed to make 1,029 horsepower. That's the goal for this vehicle. It was designed for that. And that being said, with tires of this size, even with our compounds, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. But with the front and rear bias and the very simplistic way that AEM put a pro car together for traction control, it would be a breeze to have adhesion in any type of surface. That's impressive. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I notice it's also got an aftermarket dash in there. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, the race pack dash is extremely, very nice. Has a very nice, elegant look to it, but has the ability via can control with coming to have you know perfect communication with the AEM Infinity. So every parameter that the AEM sees, I can display on the dash. Everything from RPM to speed, I do have the dash that has a GPS built in, so I necessarily don't even need wheel, spans, wheel speed sensors or gearbox sensors to know how fast I'm going. It can use a global positioning to be able to tell me my speed, which is very nice. Above and beyond that, other parameters like air temperature, 
um, uh, water temperature, oil pressure, and get this, level of fuel in my tank also is a huge advantage of this system. So it's a very simple, intuitive system to use, plug and play per se, and one that I'm a huge advocate of as well. The uh, fuel level particularly is a, is a really nice feature in any car you're going to run on the street. Absolutely. Okay, so looking at the car from the outside, it uh, doesn't look like any Honda Odyssey I've ever seen before. What have you done with the suspension to get that ride height? Well, you know what? It has a very beautiful stance. And I know stance is kind of a bad word sometimes in, in, in high motorsports circles. But I wanted a vehicle that not only could appeal to the enthusiasts who love cars from an engine perspective, but also people who love how car certain cars look. The vanning culture in Japan is very big and this pays homage to them. So I, I elected the services of air ride suspension to be able to create a bag, a unique bag system that is not available to the public for the 2014 and onwards Honda Odyssey. Above and beyond that, you can see these very nice wheels here from 1552. They're 20 by 9.5 in dimension, inches of course, and it gives a very nice look, very nice elegant look to the van itself as well. Lastly, the interior looks like it's had a, had a bit of work as well. There's really no area of this Honda Odyssey you haven't touched. What's been done to the interior? You see the interior has a very nice supple leather interior with a very nice basket weave grain in the center of it. I wanted something that also you know, is very extremely fast and could appeal to enthusiasts, but something could be luxurious for the family as well. I have a new family now, and I, and I love speed, and I love power, and I want an opportunity where I can build a car that can really allow me to take my family out and have a great time and have enough space for all the kids' toys and so on and so forth, but also be fun to drive on the street and on the track as well. Well, you've certainly got room for the family in the back, Absolutely. no doubt about that, and uh, with 1,029 horsepower, yeah. I imagine that should be enough to keep the kids in the back pretty quiet. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's going to be a blast out there. Okay, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us, BC. Thank you. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.